Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stepping. This is our how to make a t-shirt quilt series and we are finally gonna to get to do some sewing today. We are going to add our stashing to our t-shirt quilt blocks and this is the last step before laying it out and actually assembling our quilt top. So it goes really fast from here. You've done most of the work by now. Now, if you're just seeing this video, this is one of a multi-part series that shows you everything you need to make a t-shirt quilt from start to finish. It's a really good beginner friendly project because there actually isn't a lot of sewing. Most of the work is cutting and fusing the t-shirts to interfacing. And then it goes pretty fast from here on out once we actually take out our sewing machine. And also they make great graduation gifts, retirement gifts, and just fun things in, in general to memorialize some trips you've made, maybe some races you've run. It's a lot of really fun things. So make sure you watch the whole series and you can get the pattern and all the supplies you need over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you get the fusible interfacing and the applique pressing sheet from us, you can get that pattern for free. So that's a great deal and a great way to say thanks by getting the supplies from us for all the free video content. All right, so we're finally gonna to get to sewing today. The first thing we're gonna do is get our sashing prepped. So if you haven't already watched it, make sure you go watch our video on how to cut our interfacing and how to cut our sashing. And where we left off was we have about half of our sashing strips already cut and ready to go. And the other half are still in a width of fabric strip and we have this cornerstone strip as well. That's because we're gonna do something called strip piecing. It is not as dirty as it sounds, but it does is it makes it really easy and fast to create the sashing and cornerstone unit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sew our cornerstone unit to our sashing in one big strip and then cut it apart into units like this. That way we don't have to cut a bunch of tiny little squares and a bunch of tiny little rectangles, sew them all together, press them all open, and then ready to go. This just makes it go a whole lot faster. So let me grab my sewing machine and we'll get started. So in quilting, we sew everything with a quarter inch seam. If you don't know what that is, go watch our video on three ways to do it correctly over on our beginner quilting video tutorial series. We'll link it up here and in the video description down below. On my machine, all I have to do is hit a special stitch and my needle will move to where it needs to be to where if I keep my fabric in edge with the side of the presser foot or in line with the side of the presser foot, it'll be a quarter inch seam every time. So now I'm gonna unfold these fabrics here and we're just gonna line them up right sides together. Now with my salvage edges even, I'm gonna start at the very edge and I'm just gonna sew all the way down. And I don't pin this, all I do is I kind of lift it up, get my edges together, and then I'll just hold it on with the finger there and let the sewing machine take it. And when I get to where I can't hold it anymore, I just repeat, line up my edges again and keep going like that all the way down the strip. Now, even if you're using fabric from the same line, sometimes these don't end at the same length. That doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Everything's totally fine. Just go ahead and sew right off the edge. Now, if you've watched any of my other sewing videos, you know that I love to press my seams open because it makes a really crisp join. But there are a very few limited circumstances where I think it's best to press the seam under. This is one of them. It's because when we have our t-shirt that has our interfacing on it, that's pretty thick. That does not want to go open. It just does not. So our t-shirt is going to be going out to the sashing. So we want this seam to go under the sashing here because then those seams are going to interlock very nicely later. So what I'm gonna do in order to do that is flip everything so that way my sashing strip is on top. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set that seam. That just means you're running the iron over top of it. Helps the threads lay a little flatter with the threads of the fabric. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this over. So that way my fabric and my seam underneath it is pointing this way. That's really important. I've seen a lot of people when they do this, they end up pulling it too far and then the seam actually is pointing back towards you. We want that seam to be pointing away from you and we wanna try and keep this as straight as possible because sometimes when you do this, it tends to kind of curve to the side and we don't want that. We want nice straight, straight seams. So this next part is also super important. I've seen so many people just take their irons and plop it straight down on top. And when you do that, 
you are not getting as flat of a seam and as flat of a join as you can. You end up pressing in pleats and then things don't end up being the right size later and you can't fit it together and you're not quite sure why. This is why you didn't press it right. So what you wanna do is set your iron down so that it is completely on your cornerstone strip and then you wanna slide it up and over and just hold it for a second. That'll help get that seam super flat. And you wanna repeat that process going all the way down. Never, ever, ever just plop it right down on that seam or you are not gonna get as good and accurate as piecing as you need to. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of that and then we're gonna be ready to cut this apart. So now we get to cut these apart and when we do it, we're gonna have our sashing and our cornerstone already attached save so much time, so much faster than cutting everything individually and sewing it individually. So to start off, I wanna be as close to that salvage as possible without going into it. And then I've got an inch line even with that seam. That's what's gonna keep everything nice and square when we sew it together. Once I'm happy with where everything's lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that apart. Slide that. And we're gonna square it up so we can take off that salvage edge. So as much as I love using the mat to measure to speed things up, you really can't do that here. You need to cut each one individually because we have to make sure that this is square when we do it. So I'm just gonna go down the rest of the strip to cut my sashing and cornerstone units and then we're ready to start sewing. All right, we've got a good teachable moment here. I'm about halfway through my strip. That's where the fold happens. And sometimes despite our best efforts, it's not perfectly square. So right now, this is pretty crooked going up here. So here's how you square that up if that's the case. What I'm gonna do is I'm lining it up so that the inch line is still even here. That is the most important part. That's what's gonna be sewn to our block here. And then I'm having it over so that I'm at three inches at the narrowest part, which is gonna be this cornerstone. You can see down here, I'm almost a full quarter inch off because of where that curve happened. So now I can go ahead and I can cut my strip. And then I'm gonna flip it around and square it up just like at the beginning of the strip. And you can't be doing this like every single one. You're gonna have a problem. You might not end up with enough strips. But every once in a while, if this happens, not a big deal. All right, so now I've got both sets of my sashing and my sashing and cornerstone ready to go. And it took almost no effort at all. It happened so fast. It is just such a great way to do this and be ready to start sewing. I'm gonna grab two of these and we're gonna start sewing them to blocks. So we are only going to sew our sashing and cornerstones to the left and top side of the block. That's because when we put another one next to it, it's going to fit in really nicely. And then once we have our final layout decided, then we're gonna be able to sew them just to the right edge on the right edge blocks only and on the bottom row blocks only. Take a look at your pattern if that doesn't make any sense. And if not, if it still is a little confusing to you, don't worry, we're gonna have a video just on that next. But for right now, all you need to know is the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this sashing piece here that has no cornerstone attached to the left side of our quilt block. And that's going to make it the same width as the one of the stashing with cornerstone. So they're gonna to fit together really nicely. So we're just gonna put these guys right sides together. And if you want, we can do some pins. We probably should, uh, just because we've got a lot of layers here and we probably have a lot of beginners here looking at this because this is, like I said, a real beginner friendly project. So when I'm pinning, what I like to do is match up my corners first and get those pinned. And 
And then I'm just gonna pin in the center here as well. Now, if your sashing strip is not the exact same height as your block, stop right now because something is wrong. Either the block is not the right size or the sashing strip is not the right size, but we haven't pieced anything. We have just fused it down and cut it. So at this point, everything should fit absolutely perfectly. All right, I'm gonna sew my quarter inch seam down this side of my block. That first pin is just kind of to hold everything together. You can remove it as soon as you have it secured underneath your presser foot. And then you just kind of wanna sew on down. I like to put my hand back here, not to tug it, but just to guide how keep everything nice and straight. Cause that t-shirt is a little heavier material than the quilting cotton. Make sure you're removing pins. You don't wanna break a needle sewing over one. Now we need our applique pressing sheet again. This is not just for when we're fusing the shirts to the interfacing. It is any time we are dealing with the iron and the t-shirts. So what you wanna do is just slide it in between up to where that seam is. That way when we are pressing the seam over, the iron does not come in contact with the screen printing ink at all. So I'm gonna start just by setting the seam just like before. Then we're still gonna press it over. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down just a little bit just so I can sort of finger press that over first. It kind of helps the seam go where it needs to. This one, is, it's just gonna wanna go that way because that interface in that t-shirt is thick. It's gonna want to go that direction, but it is very important that you are helping that along as well. All right, so I've got my pressing sheet right up to that seam and I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I drag that over. Even though it's uh, we have the pressing sheet in between, we still wanna make sure that we're taking all the same precautions that we did before so we have the best possible outcome. All right, so you usually are not spending so much time on the iron at this point to where you have to worry about the screen printing ink coming up. But if you had one where a lot of the screen printing ink stuck to the pressing sheet, take your time when you pull that up and always still go from that 45 degree angle. But this is looking good. It's pressed over underneath that sashing. So now when I lay this out, I've got my seam going underneath the sashing to the left over here and underneath the sashing to the right over here. So that means when I flip these guys right sides together, my seams are going in opposite directions and it can do something called butting up next to each other, which makes it really easy to get really good joints, especially if you're just starting. So I'm lining these seams up, not just so that they're even on the edges, but also so that those seam allowances are just like meeting each other right in the center. When you feel it, it should feel like a threshold in your house where floors are meeting. It should just feel like it comes up, meets steadily, and then goes off when the seam allowances end. If you feel a gap in there, or if you feel a bump, it means that the gap means that they're too far apart. The bump means that you have them right on top of each other and you're not gonna have a good joint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pin in the seam allowance in the right side. And if you notice, I'm pinning right where that quarter inch seam is gonna be. It really doesn't do you any good to pin in any other spot because then this spot here can move. And then it doesn't matter that you pin the seam anymore because you did something weird and pin like over here. And then this whole section here can move a whole lot on you. So you don't want that to happen. Uh, you want to make sure that we're taking all this time. We want it to look nice, especially if you're gifting it to somebody. Now, if you want, you can pin this corner. I generally don't. I generally just pin my corner and my middle again. Now, again, this should be the exact same width. If it is a little in, like here you can see it's pulling in just a smidge, that's probably just from the process of pressing it oh, the seam under instead of flat. That's a normal thing. But if it is a significant difference, then either something was cut wrong or you sewed a quarter inch seam wrong, one of the two happened and you need to take a look and see what's going on. But I'm gonna go ahead and sew my quarter inch seam right here. One other really good tip is when I sew, here, the reason why I pin in the right side of the seam allowance is we're gonna start sewing this way. So I'm gonna stop with my needle down once I have it secured in the first half of that seam allowance, only then am I gonna remove that pin and that's gonna keep those joins really nice and secure for as long as possible. So if you have one of those presser feet that has a guide on the side, you might not wanna use that for this project because it's gonna be running into the pins and make it harder to get good joints. All 
All right, we've got a press again, so we need that pressing sheet. Again, I'm just gonna slide it right up because we've got a lot of screen printing on this t-shirt. So I want it to be right tucked in where that seam allowance is. Again, I'm gonna set that seam. I'm gonna peel that back and then I'm gonna set, put finger press that over just a little bit. Put my pressing sheet back in place and we're gonna press it over. Again, making sure that we are dragging the iron over, not plopping it right down on top of that seam. All right, so that's it, that's our block. We've got all the t-shirt fuse to the interfacing. We've added our sashing and our sashing and cornerstone to the top. And we need to do this to all the blocks in the quilt. And when we come back to the magic of editing, I will have done that. And we get to talk about laying out your quilt so that you have a pleasing design and you don't have a bunch of colors all grouped together. And then we get to sew it together, quilt it and be done. So I told you this, it goes really fast once you get to this step because there really is not a lot of sewing in a t-shirt quilt. There's a lot of cutting, there's a lot of fusing, but the actual sewing part is very minimal, which is what makes it really good for a beginner. So really fun project. Again, we've got all the supplies plus a pattern on how to do this over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you get the applique pressing sheet and the interfacing from us, you can get that pattern for free. So great deal and a great way to say thanks for all this video content. And don't forget to follow along with the series because if you follow along in real time with us, you will be able to finish this in time for graduation this year. It is going to be a really fun project, I think, for all of you guys to do and a great way to memorialize like those t-shirt quilts. Because, you know, when the when your, you know, high schooler goes off to college, they're probably not going to want to wear their high school t-shirts, but it would be really cool to have that as their um, quilt on their dorm um, bed. That would be, that would be really fun uh, way to send them off with that. And you know, not an heirloom quilt that you're worried about them messing up because it's it's worn out old t-shirts they're not gonna wear again. So that is a really fun thing to do as well as great for retirements, great for people who really like to do races or in this case, memorialize some travel from 15 years ago for t-shirts that no longer fit me because I've had two children and I work too much to work out. So that's where we're at in my life anyway. But I hope you're enjoying this series. We're gonna be wrapping it up soon here. So you should feel really proud of yourself for getting to this step. We are almost done. So I will see you in the next one. And until next time, happy quilting. <music>